Hey guys, just played a game against somebody rated 1150 odd and uh, it's just a, a rip roarer and I thought this is just too much fun not to share with you so let's just take you through it and we're going to look out for the good and the bad and the ugly with this. Okay, so my opponent starts with um, e4, I play d6, I'm going for the black lion, standard black lion opening and now e5. And he advances the pawn, which is good. Play the bishop to there. This is all standard black lion. Brings his other knight out. And now c6. Here he decides to exchange. So I do have a central pawn majority now. Um, and now we have b3. So maybe looking to Fianchetto his dark squared bishop. I advance h6 now before putting my queen on here i just want to take this square away from the knight so he doesn't have any ideas of like bishop to here and knight in which would pretty much just force me to castle kingside if he does that but anyway it's one of my moves now he does the dark square bishop fianchetto i move my queen to c7 defending this pawn and we have queen e2 so now i'm thinking is my opponent planning to castle queenside? Now with a black lion, you generally want them to castle kingside and launch your attack up the kingside. So I'm thinking, how can I uh, discourage this move? So I now play a5, giving him the idea that, okay, we've got a semi-open file here, and maybe I'm planning to push up this way. So he plays now a4, may be making castling queenside a bit less attractive and i play g5 and he moves his rook across to the semi-open file which means he's not going to castle queenside so now my knight starts its journey round here this is the general idea moves his bishop to attack f7 knight g6 and he castles so i move my knight in now hitting his queen and there we go, queen moves across to d2. So I'm not concerned about this pawn, it's defended twice, so that's absolutely fine. And I uh, slide my rook across to g8, in line with my opponent's king, and we have g3, hitting my knight. So I move my knight into h3 with check, and the king moves into the corner. Now I pin the knight against the rook, and my goal here is to bring more pieces into the attack on the king side, trying to find a way to break through. Now, queen moves forward to d3. And um, so the knight is still pinned on the rook. Um, I move my rook across to d8. And the queen now comes back to e2. I push forward with my pawn. This pawn is protected twice by the knight and the rook. So we're okay there. And now he moves his knight back to b1, which is interesting. Um, and I now grab the knight. So I'm trying to just break things open on that side of the board. Queen recaptures. And now pawn to g4 attacks the queen. Queen moves back to e2. And now I'm gonna bring my knight back round. This is a nice outpost for the knight. It can't be attacked by a pawn from there because this pawn is too far forwards and this pawn is too far forwards so they can't harass my knight. He plays h4. Now I could here have taken en passant. That might have been an idea but I move my knight into f3 instead. So I'm now trying to kind of suffocate him there on the king side. We have pawn to c3 and now I just push c5 uh, he might have ideas of pushing the b-pawn. And now he moves his bishop back into the corner. Um, queen c6. So now my queen, if you notice, is in line with the king down that diagonal. Queen comes across now to a2, another slightly unusual move. Um, it undefends this pawn, so I simply grab the pawn. And now we have the pawn push, the pawn break on the b-file. I ignore it and move my knight back. And, oh yeah, so this is what I'm, I missed. This is an ugly part of the game, right? So with this pawn move, 
I'm thinking, you know, I only looked at his attacks on these pawns and I thought, I can handle that, that's okay. What I didn't realize is that he now has two attackers on this pawn with the bishop and the queen, so he has like a barrage going on there. Um, and of course, my king can't defend that pawn. So bishop takes, and then that's going to be goodbye to the rook. So I uh, capture with my king. Now, with this knight move here, you'll notice that I'm now lining up a discovery. So if I move this knight, then his king's going to be in check in the corner. So this is just one of those examples where you can get two stuck on the tracks with your own ideas and ignore your opponent's plans. So I'm getting too overexcited about my own ideas here. Maybe I'm thinking about capture this pawn, something like that. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, bishop takes the pawn. King has to move out of the way. Now the bishop comes back, kind of a in-between move, with another check. I move my king out of the way, and now he grabs the rook. Right. Now, at this point in time, what I should have noticed is that I have two attackers on that bishop, and it's only got one defender in the form of this queen, so I should have just grabbed the piece. But I didn't do my goldfish. I was too interested in my own plans at this point. So I grab the uh, pawn with my knight, giving check from the queen here. Another option could have been maybe knight here and grab the rook, but that would have only won the exchange. Um, so here with check, so my idea now is that wherever his king goes, I could just drop my queen in here and deliver checkmate, but I've, again, missed something because this square here on d5 can be hit by the, the bishop the queen and the rook so we've got like a barrage against a square right we've got a kind of um, <clears throat> too many pieces looking at that square so my opponent can now simply drop the bishop back to there i capture with the knight and he captures with the queen so now i'm actually pretty much a rook down for a pawn, okay? Um, we exchange queens, and now I have to move my knight. Okay, so I'm still basically a rook behind in this game, and it's all because for that moment I was too transfixed with my own attacking idea, and I thought I had a checkmate, and I simply neglected to check what else was going on on the board. So we have a pawn capture. Now I advance my pawn to h4, so I've got ideas that I need to, I need to rescue this game somehow, right? So I'm thinking maybe capture there, bring my rook across with check. I have no queen anymore. And now we have pawn takes again. I capture now with the bishop. So this is discouraging any ideas of rook takes. This bishop's defended three times. We have rook across. Um, adding a second attacker, but it's okay. I've still got three defenders, so I don't need to worry about that file right now. I grab the pawn, he grabs the pawn, I grab the pawn with check. So I've won my pawn back, and the king moves towards the knight. And now I've also got ideas, if you look at the arrangement of these rooks, I'm now thinking that putting my knight on here would hit both rooks. However, I would still be a piece down. Even if I get the exchange back, he's going to have um, a rook and two minor pieces against my rook and one minor piece. The other great thing about this square now is that if he doesn't notice, his king is also going to be hit with a three-way knight fork from that square. He doesn't notice, and he advances a pawn to defend his rook on d5. So now, obviously, I go in with a check and a three-way fork. King moves, and now I decide to advance my pawn. And the reason is that this comes with another check. So the king's now in check. And um, I'm still hitting both rooks and the knight is defending this pawn. So the king can't take that pawn. In fact, the king is running out of squares. So he can't go there, there, there because of the bishop. Can't go there or there because of the pawn. And can't go there because of my knight. So the king only has two squares where it can go. And the king decides to go to h4. So now I grab the rook, which means that this pawn is undefended, 
and what I'm hoping for is that he recaptures my knight with his rook and indeed he does. Now can you see the tactic now that basically gives me a winning advantage in the game? I am a whole minor piece down, I've got one extra pawn right now. So this is the move. Bishop to e7 hits the king and the king is in check but it's also a discovered attack against the rook from my rook. So the king has to move, he grabs the pawn and I put my rook to there and now this is going to probably going to win one of these two minor pieces and I should now be in a winning position. We have bishop to e5 check so this is one way that you can escape from basically what is a pin. So this is like a double pin if the if the knight moves I grab the bishop, if the bishop moves anywhere I grab the knight because the bishop is dark square bishop and cannot defend a, a knight that's on a light coloured square. However, you can escape from a pin like that or a fork when you've got maybe two pieces under attack um, if you can move with check. So he moves with check. I block with my bishop because I'm now up the exchange. Knight moves to attack the rook and I just move the rook with check. So now I can win the bishop or at least exchange bishops. King moves here to defend the bishop and we exchange. So now we are into the end game and my job at this point is to try and uh, promote a pawn if I can. So the pawn pushes forwards. So clearly the knight is guarding this square. Uh, and so what I'm thinking is that if I can force the knight to capture and if I can recapture with the rook, then I should be fine. King moves away. I move my rook now to g2, where it is now guarding this square. King moves across again. I push the pawn. He's forced to take and I recapture. So now I'm uh, a rook for a pawn up. So what move would you play at this point in time? White's only advantage really is that he has two pawns. And so the only way he can win this game is going to be to try and promote one of those pawns. Also, I have this pawn here which is currently unprotected. My king can't move to protect it because of my opponent's king. So he moves there and I move my knight, my rook down, sorry, to e5. So that comes with check on the king. And it's also an x-ray defense of this pawn. So the king has to move away. Can't go there, can't go to any of these squares. There's only one square where the king can move. Alternatively, he could block with his pawn. King moves away, and I now move my rook to c5. So what I'm doing here is I am just simply trying to remove squares away from my opponent. Okay, so he can't take the pawn because it's defended, and he can't go to any of these squares here because of my king. So there's only one legal move because his pawns can't move. He has to move the king to a7, and I simply move back. I know that he still has one square where he can go or he could push his pawn. So he pushes his pawn and I simply grab the pawn. King moves back here. And now what I'm thinking is I need to get my king around here somewhere so that I can grab his pawn. Um, so now I move my rook back in so that my king can come around the back of the pawn. Sorry, around the back of the rook, um, preventing him from being able to come in and grab that pawn. So we simply do this move my rook away, and now I'm going to grab the pawn and it will be game over. So there we go, and I start pushing my pawn and then we have the, the end of the game there. So yeah, a sobering lesson really in the vital importance, and I mean, it's, it's like I need to take lessons for myself here, right? When you, even when you think you have a winning checkmating uh, tactic lined up, when you think you've got a great attack, never forget to look over your shoulder for what your opponent is doing because they're in the middle of the game. Um, I really should have just stopped and taken stock and thought, what is my opponent's plan at this point in time? What are the threats? What's undefended? What's underdefended? I could have recaptured that bishop with one move and my um, attacking plan would still then have been on. 
but as it is, I, I simply just overlooked it, got overexcited, which you, you can't afford to do in chess if you want to win. Um, and I kept my opponent in the game and it was just fortunate that uh, at the end I was able to win his rook using some simple tactics and uh, go on to a, a relatively comfortable win. But I just really enjoyed that. I thought my opponent played very well uh, around 11.50. Um, his uh, accuracy was around 60. Mine, surprisingly, was 90, which uh, was, uh, yeah, a bit of a surprise for me. But there you go. Uh, lots and lots of fun in that game. Wanted to share it with you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.